Now the difference between the Fraunhofer diffraction and Fresnel diffraction. This Fraunhofer diffraction is also called far field diffraction and the Fresnel diffraction is called near field diffraction. Why they are called far field and near field diffraction? Let's see the diagram of that. So here you see the diagram of Fraunhofer diffraction from the small aperture or small the slit. As you see here, there is a source of the light and this source of light emit waveframes. That waveframes are spherical or cylindrical. What we want in case of Fraunhofer diffraction is plane waveframe. So we have used the lens here. This is the convex lens. This convex lens makes the rays parallel. And so we get the plane wavefront. This plane wavefront then incident on the slit. The plane wavefront then incident on this slit. Then every point in this plane of the slit acts as secondary source and emits secondary waves in all direction. And then these diffracted rays or these secondary waves which are emitted from every point from the plane of the slit, we need to focus it. And so another lens is used. And here I have shown two such a secondary waves, which are making an angle zero. They are focused at point P naught. And those secondary waves, which are making an angle theta, with normal to the plane of the slit, they are focused at point P1. So this is the diagram of Fraunhofer diffraction. As you can see, in case of the Fraunhofer diffraction, we need a plane wavefront. And you get plane wavefront only when the source is at infinite distance. When this source is at infinite distance, then only the plane wavefront will be incident on the slit. And also, when you want to focus such a parallel rays, your screen also should be at distance infinity. And that's why the Fraunhofer diffraction is called far field diffraction. Now see the diagram of Fresnel diffraction. In this case, no lenses are used. There is a source. And so cylindrical or spherical wavefront incident on this slit accordingly it bends and on the screen which is also at finite distance from the slit you can get the diffraction fringes in this case from the slit source and screen both are at finite distance and hence they are called near field diffraction so you got the idea why they are called far field and near field diffraction. So the first difference can be, you know, one is far field diffraction, another one is near field diffraction. Then let's see the second difference between Fraunhofer and Fresnel diffraction. As you can see in this case, source and screen are at infinite distance from slit or obstacle that is in case of the Fraunhofer diffraction. In case of Fresnel diffraction as from the diagram you can see that the source and screen are at finite distance from slit or obstacle. So that is the second difference. Then the th third difference, you know, just for sake of writing the difference, we can say that in case of the Fraunhofer diffraction, convex lenses used
we are using the two convex uh, lenses to make rays parallel to make rays parallel before falling on aperture or slit and to focus light on screen. So two lenses are used. One lens is to make the rays parallel before it is falling on the slit and the second lens is used to focus this secondary waves on the screen. But in case of Fresnel diffraction, this is the Fresnel diffraction, no lenses are used here. So that can be one of the difference. Then the fourth difference is, let us write the fourth difference. Let us see what kind of incident wavefront is. Incident wavefront on slit or obstacle is plane wavefront. As you can see here, the lens is used which makes the rays parallel, that is plane wavefront. And that plane wavefront is incident on the slit. So that is one of the dif difference. But this, in case of the Fresnel diffraction, there is a source over here. So source is very near to the slit. So the wavefront can be spherical or cylindrical. So the fourth difference for Fresnel diffraction is incident wavefront is spherical or cylindrical. Then let's see what is the last difference that is difference number five. In the plane of aperture, phase of secondary waves is same at all points. In the plane of aperture, or we can say obstacle, phase of secondary waves is same at all points. So phase of secondary waves in the plane of aperture is same. How come it is same? Let's see that. Let's say this is the plane wavefront over here. When this plane wavefront is incident on the slit, so in this plane of slit, the plane wavefront is incident on the slit. So in the plane of the slit, as it is plane, every point in this plane of the slit, waves, the phase of secondary waves is same. All the particles in the plane of the slit would be at the same state of vibrations. That is, they all will be having same phase. So the difference is in the plane of aperture or obstacle, the phase of secondary waves is same at all points. But in case of Fresnel diffraction, the wavefront is either cylindrical or spherical 
and when this wave of current is incident on the slit and as you know that this is the plane of slit so when this wave front is incident on it it goes slowly so in this case secondary waves at a different points are having different phase as this is a cylindrical it travel through this plane like this and so in the plane of aperture phase of secondary wave is waves is different at different point and that is the fifth difference in the plane of aperture you can call it slit or obstacle phase of secondary waves is different at different points